I'm, I'm on final part of my, my battery loco build. It's a five inch gauge uh, shunter which I've made. And uh, you'll see how I made it in parts one to seven if, if you look back at my videos. And basically, just to recap, I've, I've done this uh, on, a, on a budget build and I'm, I'm a complete novice. It's my first one I've made. And I've made it from all scrap items, unused items, and items that I no longer wanted in my workshop. And the only, out, only major outlay I've had uh, an expense really is for the motors and um, the control unit to control it. Now there is a few other little odds and odds or items which I've, I've had to buy but they're negligible regarding price wise. Um, to buy one of these completed and ready for running, painted and everything, you, you're probably talking £2,000 plus I've probably made this uh, for, I would say, less than a fifth of that price. I have had to do some modifications to it from from when I last did my videos. And I'll explain mo the mods I've had to do and, and the reason behind them shortly. Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll just... Oh, and also... I said I was going to do it in six weeks. I think it's actually took me about 11, 11 weeks now. But, like I said, I had to do some modifications to it. And I've had to also make a riding car, which I forgot I got to do before I could even try it on, on my, my track, which I'm a member of now. So, I'll just take you, take you around it quickly and, uh, and show you it cab. Right, so in my cab here, I've, I've put a dashboard in. I've got my headlight switch, I've got my battery indicator and light, I've got a, f uh, a resettable fuse, which is there, and I've got a, an isolating switch, and then my, control, my controller, I've velcroed that to, into the cab so it do not fall. Uh, I've labelled all that up now, it's got my on and off switch, and my forward and reverse, and my horn, and my accelerator. So that's all sorted now. Uh, I'm calling this my, my boot lid because this is on a hinge and it drops down so I can access me, me, all my wiring and my other fuses and my speed controller and my, um, my sound unit. Now, I said in my past videos I was making this on a, 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 on a budget and spending as least as, as I could on it. Well. I have done that really, and, I, and all, everything you can see is just from scrap. I've joined it all together, I've put cosmetic strips on, onto, where I've joined my aluminium together, same on my steel frame. And uh, because I've spent such least, a least amount of money on it, I've decided to put a sound unit on, and I've got a speaker in my cab, in the roof at cab up here, and I've put one in front grille on the front. So, I did that really because I wanted to take my grandchildren right track on this to get me up and running as quick as I could. And I thought by putting sound on and a, and a light and a horn... ...and a headlight, it just gives, gives them a bit more interest when, you, when you're taking them on track and showing them everything. That's the reason I did it anyway. Right, so this is my riding car, which, which set me back a couple of weeks. I, I had to make, make this from scratch, and uh, it's not my own design. I've, I've copied measurements off a friend of mine who was a member at the club, um, and I've based it around uh, the dimensions he used, he's, he's used for his. Uh, I'll just explain to you. It's got, uh, it's got leg rests on it, which slip off by just undoing these two split pins. leg rest then I meant foot rest and then the seat just unclips underneath and slips off and then I'll just quickly show you it I'll pick camera up and show you but I'm not going to know detail with that because uh, that, that's for another project I suppose so 
this set me back a couple of weeks. Um, it's 28 inch wheelbase and it's probably 32 inch overall length. I've put brakes on it, uh, independent braking to each wheel, same with independent suspension to each wheel. Uh, and basically, without going into too much detail, I think that length of wheelbase is about the maximum I can use on our track because on the curves you, you'll start to get binding at wheels and if you've got a track with, with shallow radiuses I think you have to plug for putting two bogies on one up front one up back with, with, with four wheels on, on front and four wheels on back that's what I'm told anyway because like I said I'm, I'm a beginner at this game but I've managed to for simplicity just to put four wheels on um, so that saved me time and, and expense with wheels. So that's me, that's me riding car. Now then, going back to my loco um, and my modifications. That's me. That's my picture I worked to, and I've not I've not worked any drawings to this. I've just made all this up from this picture, and I think it's come out pretty much similar. Uh, my headlight here, I made that out of a billet of aluminium and shaped it on my machines and that's just a bit of aerial, television aerial tubing um, for, me, for me exhaust. So going back to me uh, to me gearing, now in my, in my previous videos you'll have seen where I've put um, i put this one motor on and uh, I went from an 8 tool sprocket to a 30 tool sprocket which gave me a ratio of 3.75 to 1 and was supposedly give me 8 mile per hour now I was assured that it, that, that one motor I was assured by the, the uh, firm I bought it off that it would pull two adults or one adult and two, two children now on my track when I took it up for a test run when I'd got the loco up and running for a test run, uh, our track has got some, they're not steep gradients, but they're long gradients. Now, as soon as I hit, hit the gradient, it, it, it got me so far, that it, then it just ran out of power. It, it would not get me up the gradient. So, I was a bit disappointed with that. Anyway, I spoke to the chap that I got the motor off, and he assured me that it should pull two adults. Uh, now whether whether it's just the the situation of our track with the gradients, I don't know. Anyway, so he suggested either going to 24 volts. I didn't want to have to do that because I didn't want to overload the motors and burn them out. So what I did, I geared it. I geared it down. Uh, to 7.5 to 1 and in hindsight that were a, a little bit of a mistake on my part because by doing that I took it back up to track and did a test run and it got me round that time but it only got me round at well it averaged two two and a half mile per hour and I based that that I based that on length of length of tracking feet and time it took to go round, I worked it out and it worked out at 2.5 mile per hour so I weren't really happy with that and that was just me on without my grandchildren on so I thought about it and I thought right I'll set to and I'll put another motor on I know it was a bit more expense but you know it had to be done so this is the setup this is the setup that I've gone to now you'll not see this in my past videos what you'll see in my past videos is my motor going to my wheel on a thirty on a eight tooth to a thirty tooth. You'll see that set up. So what I've done, I'll just explain this quickly. Uh, in the middle of the loco frame underneath, I've put two lay shafts, and all they are is uh, a little bit of channel. Aluminium channel, probably 
two inch by three inch and I've put two gears it two sprockets in in each one a 16 tooth and an 8 tooth now what I've done I've put a 12 tooth sprocket on my motor and I've gone with a chain to my lay shaft gearbox to 16 teeth so that that's given me a reduction in me in my motor speed and then I've gone from an 8 tooth which I originally had on my motor to a 30 tooth on my wheel which I originally had so I've geared it down now to 4.9 to 1 and everything on this side of paper that you can see on my rear wheel I've mirrored and put it on my front wheel now I've got my, my new motor another lay shaft gearbox and my original 30 tooth wheel on my wheel so I've now I've geared it down and I've doubled my power I took it for a test run and uh, yeah it works it works okay it, I mean it don't go fantastically fast because it'll only do five mile per hour now but that's plenty adequate for a for a a, a miniature track and I took a friend up with me so we both got on riding car and it pulled both of us round so it, it, it it's just adequate to pull two adults round or one adult and two 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 of my grandchildren. So that's my mods which I did and that's the reason for my setback in time wise which uh, which it's took me a bit longer to do now. Uh, right before I progress with rest it video I just thought I'd show you underneath best I can underneath underneath loco to show you them uh, gearboxes I've made and if you can see I've got this light shining I've met this I've put two of these on and they've got a, a 12 a 16 tool sprocket and an 8 tool sprocket coming off them like I explained in my, in my, in my drawing I shown you so there's two of them on, one for each side. Now I can't I can't tip the loco up at the moment to, to give you a better view of that because it's got the batteries in and it and it's too heavy for me to lift. I can lift it with batteries out, but it's all set up now with batteries in. Now if anybody were were interested and wanted to know more details about them uh, mini mini gearboxes. I'd do a separate video for you if, on that if you if you were if anybody were interested, but it's pretty straightforward really. There's just two bearings in each and two sprockets in each. So that's me me modifications. Right, so just to recap on on this then. Uh, yeah, just to recap. I know I keep saying it, but I'm a complete novice. It's the first one I've made, and I've made it from basically from scrap and unused items in my workshop. So, if anybody's inclined to want to do this, you, these are achieve, achievements you can probably get uh, yourself if you tried. Um, like I said, to buy one of them is you're talking two thousand pound plus and I've probably made this for a fifth of the price and I've not worked in old drawings I've just I've just worked everything out to, to suit that picture that I've shown you so I'm a new I, I'm, a, I'm new to this and I've just made me send a member of my local club and this will get me, me around now with my two grandchildren to, to get them on track and uh, so I can well, I don't know if they'll be interested or not, but I'm going to take them anyway and see what see what they think. And then in, in meantime, while I'm while I can drive around right track on this on this that I've made, I'm starting to think about making a, a steam locomotive next, and I'll just explain to you which one I've decided on. So having spoke to a, a few people in my club and got to know a few people. Um, I'm, I've gathered a lot of information together, and I think my first, my first, pro the first project I'm going to start with a real live steam is, is one called a meter made, 
Now the reason I'm picking that one is because it's a, a six wheel version of a sweet pea and apparently um, they're, they're quite, I'm not going to say simple, they, they, they're, they're easier to make apparently than um, any other locomotive because they use a marine boiler. Um, not not a not a usual your usual locomotive boiler, and that they're, they're apparently easier to work on. So that's a picture of a a meter made that's that's already that's part partly done with no cab on, and it's a six wheel version of this sweet pea as you can see up front. Now. You've got a license with this to be able to to build the cab how you want and water tanks how you want and various other things. So you can like you've got a bit of scope to to make it how you you feel you you like it to be. And I have made a start on it, but I'm not going to make a proper start probably till autumn. And I'll just show you what I've done because I'm going to make this like I've done this one. I'm going to make this steam locomotive uh, meter made on a on a budget again, and I'm not going to I'm not going to bodge make a bodge job. I'm going to make a proper job, but I'm, I'm, I am going to do it on a budget build. Now just now just an example of when I say a budget build, I've bought this this steel here for, for, for main frames. The thirty the thirty inch long, and I could have I could have brought. Um, bright mile steel flat bar with square edges at the, at the correct size but I got this this steel cheap but it's six inch wide and I need four inch so I've set two and I've sewn all the way down one edge to make it four, four and an eighth wide and now I'm going to machine these edges up square and then I've got to sew this one same so basically I've got this steel for my frame for half the price of buying um, ready made ready cut steel foot frames if you like so straight away I've saved 50% on my frames and that's how I'm going to be doing rest at loco I'm not going to use castings where I can manage to uh, manufacture them and fabricate them and machine them up on my machines and we lay them in milling machine so uh, anyway watch this space and uh, I'll probably do a few videos of me doing that steam loco but I'm not I'm not starting proper till autumn time we're coming into spring now and it's uh, it's time to get out in fresh air a bit I think so I'll probably start that properly in autumn anyway don't forget to watch parts one and seven of me building me uh, me battery loco from scrap, uh, and I'll catch you on my next video. So thanks for watching.